This video tutorial will be one video that covers start to finish the client intake process for Hancock Software's LIHEAP Utility Assistance. This video will cover entirely how to add a client application, complete all of the client intake screens, and request benefits. This video may be longer than the others, but it will move quickly. So to go into more detail about each screen, please refer to the other detailed video tutorials. This video summarizes videos one through six of the previous video tutorials. This one video will cover first, how to add a client and complete the client information screen. Second, how to complete the fuel usage screen. Third, how to complete the family screen. Fourth, income. Fifth, required documents. Then, to go over a quality assurance process of the inputs until this time. And finally, to calculate benefits on the client information screen and request benefits on the request benefits screen. Let's get started. The first step is to add a client on the client information screen. When you log into Hancock's application, you will see a list of all of the contracts or allocations that your agency serves. The first step is to choose the allocation that you want to add the client to, whether it be Fast Trap, Track, or Heap, and then press the Save button. Then press the Add Client menu item to add a new client. Enter the example, the first name and last name, the application date, def defaults to today's current date but can be changed, the phone number, area code first, proceed it by a seven digit phone number, a second phone number if applicable, Then you will see the household demographics section. We're going to skip this for now because this section actually self-populates once you complete the other intake screens. You will see check boxes that are agency unique for a contract, such as in this case, an example of severe financial hardship, but your agency would have unique check boxes. Then enter the physical mailing address. Select the street type for California installations. The apartment number, the zip code. The building type. The city and county. Landlord information if applicable. If the mailing address is the same as the physical address, check same. You'll have a couple additional fields here, here. First would be the client's email address. Another field to mark how the client heard about the program. This field is to type in the location of the client intake if you have multiple um, intake sites for your agency. Choose the building type. The primary heating source. Then you'll have a couple check boxes here. First, if the heat's included in the rent, if the applicant is part of Section 8 housing, if the hot water heater is included in the rent, or if the client is a fast track or crisis case. You'll have the initial functionality here to say that the applicant also requested weatherization, or conversely, to record that they already were weatherized. And you'll be able to choose the weatherization referral type. And lastly, and this is a screen you're going to come back to often, is the comment box. You know, reached out to client, no answer, any comments you have about the client. And once you save this client information screen, you'll be able to continually add comments over time. The comments will save on the screen. Now once you save the screen, notice that the left menu changed. 
It now displays all of the client intake screens. We have just completed step one, the initial client information screen. The final buttons on the client information screen are LIHEAP form, which is the program's application. LIHEAP eligible, which is a uh, letter to the, home, to the uh, client notifying them that they're eligible for the program, the ability to print the comments, the ability to copy a client. LIHEAP benefit will be covering later, but this is actually the button you use for the software to calculate the available benefit here. And then you'll also have the um, option to deny a client down the road here by selecting a reason. And then you'll have a denial uh, letter at the bottom. So that covers the functionality of the client information screen. To review, we selected the contractor allocation after we logged in. Then, step two, we clicked to add client. Step three, we entered client information. Step four, we remembered to skip the demographic information in gray. That's the information here, because that will populate from the information we enter later on the other intake screens. Step five, we entered the mailing address, the physical address, and the landlord information. And if the mailing address was the same, we checked the box. Finally, we entered and saved comments. Let's move to the next step, entering the fuel usage screen. So, after we completed client info, we move right to fuel usage. Here, we select the utility. This could be submeter, WPO, generic, or it could be a particular utility. You will see that by selecting the utility, the software prompts you on how many digits are required in the account number. Enter the account number. For WPO sources, you can enter, you can choose no account number or enter the text, no account number. The date. The total due on the monthly bill. In some cases, this includes late charges from the previous month. Monthly cost is that one isolated cost of the utility bill for that month. If the billing information is the same as the client's physical address, check same as client and the information will populate. And then save. Notice this is a gas customer. If I had another fuel source, perhaps wood paint, propane and oil, I could select that as a second record. Make any uh, notes, like no account number. The date. Enter the information and save. Now, if anything wasn't uh, completed, the software tells you. In this case, the name is required, so I forgot to check same as client. You'll notice I have two fuel records, and I can click back and forth through both of them at the bottom right of the screen by clicking Next. Let's review what we just did. We completed the fuel usage screen. First, we selected the utility vendor, then we entered the account number, we entered the date on the utility bill. We entered the amount the applicant owed and also entered the monthly cost for that particular month. Then we check the billing address and we can add multiple fuel records. In our example, we added a propane record and a um, gas record. Remember that date is the date of the utility bill that you're recording. Let's move to the next step, the family screen. Now the family screen, this is where we, we record all of the family members in the house. You may not know all of the family members. That's okay. If you don't know the other family members, you can use generic naming conventions. There are a few required fields on this screen. The first is birthday or age. In most cases, you're gonna just know the age. Notice I can change the gender. Social security number. In California, this is required for the household um, applicant. 
Disability is required for reporting. Race is required re for reporting, particularly Native American in the California system. Language is required for reporting. The state of California tracks non-English speakers. And in some cases, they also track migrant seasonal farm workers. These are the only required fields, and I save. It is completely optional to complete any of the other fields. To add the next family member, I'm going to want to press add, even if I don't know the name. I can simply press family member two in first name. Or I could type daughter instead of two, whatever your agency wants to do. But the, the reason why I am entering the second family member is that I can get some of the reporting information that the state requires. State required information, again, to review is disability, race, non-English speaking, and in some cases, migrant farminal migrant seasonal farm worker, and then I save. Notice there I quickly added two family members and I can see the total of two at the bottom and I can flip through the two family members. Let's just review what I did. After the fuel usage screen, we completed the family screen. We added the first, well actually the first and last name of the applicant displayed. We added the age or the date of birth, whichever we knew. We entered the social security number if required, which it is in California for the applicant only. We recorded disability, race, language, which is the state required information in addition to a migrant a seasonal farm worker checkbox. The other fields are optional. Then we saved and we added additional family members. Now why did we keep pressing add and add each family member? The goal in this was to create a record for each family member to capture demographic totals on the client information screen. Remember a few minutes ago I told you to skip the gray parts of the client information screen? You will see now that those totals have populated from the information we just entered on the family screen. Okay, let's move on. The next step is the income screen. At this screen, we choose the family member in the drop-down list and we choose the income type. You're going to see a large list here everything you're pretty familiar with. You're e even going to see a no income option in this list. In this case, I'm going to stick to a straight gross wages and salary. Next, I enter the payment amount and the frequency in which they receive that amount. I'm going to completely ignore hours per week unless I chose hourly here. If you did choose hourly, hours per week becomes a calculator. Then I'm going to go to the next family member. Let's say the main applicant had two sources of income. I can add that source again, that applicant again. Let's say in addition to a normal gross wage and salary, they receive um, alimony. Let's say that the, the child, occupant number two, has no income. You can choose no income. It's important here though in the state of California you have to have at least one record even if it is no income. When I save notice that the total monthly income will calculate. So to review what we did, we selected the family member, we selected the income type, we entered the payment amount, and we selected the frequency in which they received that payment amount. Remembering, at least one income record must be present. Let's go to the next step, which is the document screen. This is where you're going to see a long list of required documentation. These are all of the CSD required documentation. Now you might say, well, my agency doesn't require some of these. In that case, just choose not required. You're going to choose complete or not required 
when you choose complete, you'll notice that the date defaults to the current date. Now it's very usual to receive documentation over time. You can always backdate or leave this screen empty and revisit it when you receive the updated documentation. It's as easy as that and press save. Any of these any of these documents can house a comment field just by typing into the comment field here. Also, you can attach a file to any of these documents. Simply click attach file, find it on your computer, add any comments and save. Let's review what we just did. To review, we completed the document screen by marking if each document is complete or if it's not required. If a document doesn't apply to your agency, choose not required. We added comments to the documents. We had the option to attach and upload documentation and add comments to the attachments as well. Okay, let's go to the next step of client intake, which is returning to the client information screen to do some quality assurance. Now, for quality assurance, this is pretty much a check. First, I want to make sure that this applicant was not serviced in another system. I'm going to go outside of Hancock and I'm going to check core. Now this is a best practice, a recommendation for successful exports. I may also check my legacy system for wood, propane, and oil. That may not be housed in core. The legacy system is the software you used before Hancock. I'm also going to check that the client is eligible here in the top right, which I'm highlighting in blue, you see priority level eligible. If this said not eligible, that means I forgot to complete one of these screens. I'm going to check my um, rank, which is my agency's unique priority plan that's unique to a contract. The software calculates this automatically. If anything, through that checking process, if I found that this client actually isn't eligible, I have the option now to click a denial checkbox here and indicate the reason why in a drop down box. So far, what we've done is we've checked for prior services, meaning we've checked HEAP clients and Fast Track clients in core. We've checked WPO clients in our legacy system. If they're already served, we check denied in Hancock. Now, if we find that the client was served under a different name in another system, we either amend Hancock's client information screen or we submit a name change request to court. Next, we're going to check for accuracy. What we did was we checked the priority level was eligible. We checked the name, address, fuel usage, and documents. After we've checked everything and we think that this application is correct, we're going to certify the application by entering a certification date. By entering a date, agencies are attesting to the accuracy and completeness of an application. Here's the certification date. And save. Okay, let's move on. The next step we're going to do is the final step to confirm the information, and then to calculate the, the benefit amount and to request the benefit. First, we've completed the certified date. Next, we check that the applicant's signature is confirmed and we save the screen. Some other things we may want to check are weatherization referrals, priority rankings, duplicate phone number, and making sure other information is correct. For weatherization referrals, at the bottom of the screen, we've indicated weatherization assistance is requested. Now, if we actually want this file to go to our weatherization system, we use this export to WAP feature at the bottom. We can send it here, and you click export to WAP, and it will go to your weatherization system. After all of this has been checked, the next step is to calculate the benefit amount. Notice right now, what is highlighted in blue, the benefit amount is zero. 
If I click LIHEAP benefit, the software will calculate the benefit amount. And now it has populated to $329. And I save. Don't forget to save. After I've calculated the eligible benefit amount, I do want to note, remember I'm working with a HEAP client. If I was doing fast track or other funding sources that allow a supplemental amount, then I can directly enter that amount in the additional amount. So to review, step five, I clicked LIHEAP benefit, which calculated the benefit and I saved. For fast track, or to adjust WPO benefit amounts, I use the supplemental amount by using the additional amount field. Finally, we're going to do the last step to create the client benefit request by selecting the utility, entering the benefit request date and the amount and saving. So, the last step, go to benefit request, select the utility, Enter the request date. Make sure that this request date is within your reporting period that you want this client to fall under. Then enter the amount, which is displayed right above, and it's calculated in the software, and press the Save button. After you press Save, you're going to get a button that lets you export directly to Core. You will only see this button when Core starts that instantaneous web service exchange. So for now, you won't see that button. After you save it, you would be able to check the client history to see if it's been exported to Core if you're using web service. You'd also be able to see the received benefit. Now, that concludes this video of how to do client intake from start to finish. In the next round of videos, we'll, we'll show you how to report this to the Core system. Thank you very much for your attention during this video.